Welcome to the Living Artist Podcast. I'm your host, Preston M. Smith. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Living Artist Podcast. I'm Preston M. Smith, at PMS Artwork Everywhere on internet land and socials. I want to thank you for landing on this podcast. Whether you're a professional artist, just getting started in the art world, a collector of art, or just consider yourself a creative person, this podcast has something for you. I like to think of it as a fun way to rant and talk to other creative people about living the life of an artist, surviving and getting ahead in the art world, and enjoying your life. But most importantly, not waiting until you're dead to make it happen. All right, let's get started. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Yes, Yes, I I can. can. Son of a bitch. (laughs) That's really the only fitting way to end that ridiculous opening is with Mumford being hit by a car. And driving away. He's okay. He's okay, everybody. He's okay. But uh, yeah, there is a point to that, as always. As I was thinking about the theme for this week's show, this week's episode, I was thinking about the kind of fighting between the body and the mind, or whatever you want to say, the material and the immaterial. And that was just the best way I could come up with it was a callback to an old, an old timey song. (laughs) So thanks for sticking with me on that one. But I thought I would talk a little bit today about the top three things I'm doing. And the reason why I'm talking about all that stuff is because the three things that I'm really focusing on right now at the moment are not necessarily tangible, tactical type stuff. It's more of, you know, working on my mentality, my state of mind, and my body. So let's talk about that a little bit today. And the first thing I wanted to talk about that I'm doing is I'm doing a new breathing technique. You know how much I love breathing techniques. You know how much I love meditation. And this is like something that I'm doing throughout the day, although I think it's really good in the morning. It is a Joe Dispenza breathing technique that is all about clearing energy or even trauma from your body. It's like stuck energy in your body. It's like clearing the seven channels of your body. And I think of it like squeezing toothpaste out of a toothpaste tube. And it kind of starts with your perineum down there at the bottom and you squeeze those muscles, you know, you tighten them and then you pull your belly button in towards your spine and then you pull your upper abdomen up towards your rib cage and then you pull that energy through your chest and then through your throat and then through the head and kind of like the pineal gland, like squeezing that and then shooting the energy out through the top of your head and the breath. So you're really focusing on squeezing and breathing in slowly and like focusing on channeling that energy and pushing it all the way up from the bottom up through the top. And he talks about that creating some sort of electromagnetic field from the top of your head down to that base part of the body and that being very powerful. Well, what I found is that it really, really wakes you up it really gives you a flush of energy. And I have noticed that it has cleared pain for me even. Uh, it doesn't last all day long, but when I do it, I find that it clears a lot of my chronic pain. So it gives me this like energy boost. It almost sends your mind into a little bit of a euphoric state and it can make you feel a little bit lightheaded the first couple of times you do it. So be careful, but it really does feel like you're channeling some energy and you do that You know, I do it like 10 times in a row. I don't know how many times he does it, but I'll click to some sort of link where you can discover it for yourself and look into it. I'm not really here to describe the entire thing that much in too much detail on what it does. He's got all the science and all that stuff to back it up. But for me, I've just found that it really gets me focused. It gets me in a state of high energy and it really clears a lot of pain and bad energy in my body. And it's a great way to start the day. It's a great way to reset yourself. And I find that when I set my intentions before I do it, like to try to get into like a high energy state or to a state of clarity or like something that I want to focus on, when you really channel that stuff while you're doing it, it almost makes it even more powerful. So give that a try. That's number one. 
The next one I want to talk about, and yes, I'm going out of order here, really, if you talk about going through the day, because it's not really important these doing these chronologically or having it like in a linear fashion. But I have set aside about an hour each day to take care of myself for some self-care, for some maintenance, for some quiet time, for whatever it is that I need to do uh, at that in that moment or in that time period. I do. And that's important because for me, and I'm sure a lot of you are like me, I'm a go, go, go type person. I can fill up my whole day very easily and just work, 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 and work myself into a state of being overworked and over anxious and all those things. So I have noticed that if I take an hour at the end of the day to do some self-care, a lot of times I'll just do some some stretching, some breathing, some trigger point release stuff uh, for the chronic pain, or I'll do some walking, I'll do an inversion table breathing exercise, or do this new relaxation technique that I will tell you about in a minute. Um, But those are all very good ways of like handling myself and doing some self-care, which really enables me to just do my whole job better. Because if I'm worn out, if I am overworked, if I'm in a state of anxiety, I'm not really going to do my best work the next day or that day. I'm not going to be the best person at the end of the day for my wife. So that has been very important for me. And uh, I'm going to give you a little bonus one because I talked about the relaxation technique. This is something that I do that I've been doing through the Curable app, but I think it's really good for anybody who's trying to calm themselves down or relax. And also you get the added benefit of getting a little bit of strength training into it. So You can look up the Curable app. I've talked about it before, but it is a technique that takes about 15 minutes. You lay down on the ground, you get comfortable, you breathe, and then you start tensing and releasing from the top of your head down to your toes. You'll like tense up your forehead. You hold it really tight for like 10 seconds, five or 10 seconds, as hard as you can. Then you release and feel the relaxation. Then you open your jaw as wide as you can, hold it for that same amount of time, tense and release, and then feel the relaxation. Then you do your neck. Then you do your shoulders. Then you do your bicep. Then you do your forearm. Then you do your hand and you stretch that out as much as you can. Then you do the other arm. Then you do your chest. And then you do your abdomen and back. And then you do your pelvic region. And then you do with your thigh, your calf, and you're clenching the toes on your feet. And you're doing each one of those for five to 10 seconds. And you're doing it as hard as you can, tensing as much as you can, and then feeling the relaxation afterwards and releasing. And then you do the other leg and then you finish up with your right foot and your toes. And then you just allow yourself to relax into that. And I find that that really gets me super relaxed. It gets me in touch with my breath, but it also builds your strength because you're almost doing this resistance training against your own body. So it has this added benefit of giving you strength training. You you notice yourself getting stronger the more days you do this. So it's a great relaxation and strength training technique, which I did, and that's a bonus. But I'm going to go back to the third one that I was going to talk about, which is really working myself into the emotion or state of mind that I want to be feeling uh, beforehand which is kind of a connection of a lot of these things, but it is a way of really getting yourself into a place where you can feel the way you want to feel, whether that's like achieving something you want to achieve or a state of love or a creative state where you're really feeling it and you're knocking out painting after painting after painting after painting and how that feels. Working yourself into that state right now before you've achieved it, which is almost like calling that state to you. And it really is powerful because it gets you into a state of mind of already being good with what you want to achieve before you've even done it, which makes it easier to bring that to you in a weird way, kind of ironically, but it also just gives you that peace of mind. It it helps you to relax in the moment. I've talked about desperation in the past. I've talked about some of those energies that are kind of blocking energies. And this technique really gets you into a place where you can clear that and you can feel what you want to feel. And you know what? The healthy byproduct of that is you just feel better. You just feel good in your day. If you want to feel abundance, if you want to feel wealth, if you want to feel love, you can work yourself into that state. And you know, as you know, in life, if you want to attract love to you, you really can't do that until you 
feel that love already in your body or you feel that self-love, then you become a more attractive person to somebody else. You become a more attractive potential partner to somebody else. It goes the same way with money. It goes the same way with creativity. It goes the same way with success. You name it. So really working yourself into that state of feeling the feeling or the emotion that you want to be feeling, the state of mind you want to be in before you actually achieve it. So that can be achieved through a lot of the things we're already talking about, meditation, uh, some of these techniques, getting yourself into a, a state of euphoria and really feeling this or visualization or some sort of walking meditation. But really, it just takes practice. So you're going to want to practice these things. You might not be able to do it right away. You might not be able to do it the first five, 10 times, but stick with it because these things are all really powerful. And I know these are not tactical things. Like I said, these are not like, well, you need to submit to this gallery. You need to, you know, take your photos this way, or you need to have this kind of brush, or you need to, you know, uh, you really need to target galleries with this kind of wording. It's not like that. I mean, I have a lot of stuff like that too, but these are more of the intangible things that you can't really put your finger on, but really snap everything else into place. Like maybe you've got that routine of doing everything physically, like hitting all the right points. You know, you're creating on a good schedule, you're creating consistency and quality over time. You are targeting galleries, you are doing shows, you are reaching out to collectors, you have the newsletter on point. You know, you are uploading your work to online galleries every day and taking good pictures of your work and doing your Instagram and your social media and all your marketing. You're doing all that, but things aren't really moving. Well, if that's the case, sometimes you need to go internally and you need to figure out maybe you're out of sync with those. Hence the anything you can do, I can do better. It's the fight between those two forces. If you can get those two working together, you can really become unstoppable. I found this so many times in my life. You know, if you really want to look for examples in your own life, you can find it. If you really want to look for the science behind it, if that's your thing, you can find some stuff online about it too. But really, I just find it from experience. Like I've done it so many times. And when I'm really hitting or firing on all cylinders with those things, if those two forces are working together, I just start killing it. Like I bring the things to me that I want, the emotions that I'm feeling, that I want to be feeling that are in the future. I bring the stuff to me. I, my sales are on point. I feel better. I feel strong. I feel energetic. I feel love. I feel balance. And then it's just, it's just a better way to live. So think about it that way. How do you want to live your best life? And how can you do that and then create a healthy byproduct of that, which is all these other things, success, love, money, abundance, strength, health, all that stuff. Well, you get these things going. You really focus on them. You give them some time in your day. Work them into your daily routines if you can. And I really guarantee that they will bring you some results. So that's just something I want to talk about today. Uh, I will bring some more tactical stuff in the future. Um, I've got another interview coming up next week with an actress, actually. So we're going to get a little perspective from an actress, which is great. She's doing really well and it should be a lot of fun. So tune in for that next week. But in the meantime, try out some of these techniques, try them out. You know, if you don't know how to really get into them, you can look at some of the links that I'm putting in there or some of the wording I'm putting in the description and do a little bit of your own research, but find a way to work this into your schedule, find a way to make it work for you. And I really do think it will pay off in dividends. So thanks for listening, everybody. We will see you on the next episode. You say tomato. I say tomato. You say potato. I say potato. Tomato. Tomato. Potato. Potato. Let's call the whole thing off. Oh, God. Ugh. Maybe I shouldn't sing in the street. This has been the Living Artist Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. I just want you to know that I appreciate you being here, and I'm grateful to be in your ears. Your art and creative life on this planet is meaningful, so thank you for sharing it with me. If you like this podcast, whatever platform you're listening to it on, please subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also leave me a positive review to show your support. This helps me to reach more people with the algorithmic magic and keep the show going strong. If you want to see more of what I do and check out the art that I create, you can visit my website at www.pmsartwork.com or follow me on social media everywhere at PMS Artwork. That's it for now. See you back here next time.